now what we want to do is run automated testing of our code to ensure its integrity. In other words, we want to make sure that we don't have a bunch of bugs everywhere and we want to be diligent about trying to stamp out those bugs as early as possible. So let's go ahead and take a look at the command we will end up doing most of the time while running tests. And it's simply python manage.py test. Now I will say right off the bat, this is not the only way to run tests in Python files or in Django files, but this is a built-in way that Django has, which means it's really approachable to get started. So this actually ran tests on my whole project, but in this case, I have zero tests actually created. That's something we want to change. But before I actually write these tests, let's actually take a look at what seems like it would be something worth testing. And that is this secret key right here, right? So right now I'm getting it from the environment variables, but there's a good chance that you will get rid of that default value. I actually recommend that you do and have it something like this. So now if we run that test again, we actually shouldn't have any issues, right? Because our environment variables are set up correctly. And this of course is coming from that .env file, as well as the Django .env package that's reading that .env file. And so we have this done well. Now, what if I actually changed it to something different? Let's say I accidentally changed the .env file of you know, Django secret key to Django secret key to save that, now run tests. Now, this is an example of a catastrophic error. This will not be easily recovered. However, when I ran the test, this is actually a way to show the test actually failed. Now it'll also fail if we try to run the server. So this is not the kind of test that we are trying to solve for. Granted, we want to solve for these tests, but catastrophic errors come up, well, right away, right? So there's really no other way to get around this catastrophic error. So what I'm gonna do is bring back the secret key in and I'm gonna give it a bad value. So just simply ABC123. Now I could totally do this right here on the ENV file, or I could do it inside of the code as well, right? So we'll kind of jump back and forth between each one. Uh, but of course, now if I run this test, no issues. But there is an issue. This is a really, really bad secret key, right? We want to test to make sure that we're not using a really, really bad secret key. So we're going to work towards that. So the first thing I want to do is inside of my configuration folder, I'm going to create tests.py. And so tests.py is going to be where we write our tests. These are these automated tests. So when we run this, it will actually go ahead and do that for us. And so to write our test, we're going to go ahead and do from django.conf, we're going to import the, or rather from django.test, we're going to go ahead and import the test case. This class, we can name however we like, as long as the class itself is inheriting from the test case and it's inside of the Python file of test.py. So in other words, I can call this try Django and we'll call it, you know, config test. And it takes in the test case. Okay. So inside of this class, what we want to do is we want to write methods for doing tests. And all of those methods just have to start with test underscore, and then you can call it whatever you like, okay? So each one of these methods can also access another method inside of test case itself. Now, if you're already familiar with Python, then you'll know of the Python library for unit test and that class of test case. Now that of course is what Django is using, except this one has a few other features that we're not gonna cover just yet. So by all means, check out the Python documentation for that one uh, to learn more about the test case that Python has. More specifically, how we actually run tests, which is simple. It's just self.assert and we want to assert something. So let's say, for instance, we want to assert true. Now we could say one equals equals one. And well, is that actual result going to be true? And let's go ahead and run it. What do you know? It ran one test and everything's okay. Now, of course, if I change it to like two, then yeah, it's obviously not gonna work, okay? So this same concept we wanna build out on. 
And honestly, using assert true a lot is probably something you'll end up using. Now you also might use assert false instead of assert true or is none or is not none. Those ones I tend to use a good amount. You could also do assert equal and put in two values, just put a you know comma here or assert not equal. Shocking, right? Probably not. Uh, but the idea here is we want to write out these things as automated tests. So this gibberish doesn't make sense. Let's actually put it into a real practical example. So what I wanna do is test the secret key strength. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this one. And the first thing that I wanna do is really just make sure that my secret key is not equal to ABC123. Okay, so how do we get the secret key? Well, we've already done it on settings.py right here. So we can always bring that in and we can import OS this way. And that will get the environment variable for it, which is fine. Or what we can do is from django.contrib or rather conf import settings. This is actually another way to get the secret key as well, which is simply just settings.secret key. In fact, this right here can get us all of the different settings or configuration that we have in Django settings, which is really cool. And it's as simple as settings. Dot. So you can use it for debug and all of those other cool things. Uh, but I wanna make sure that at the very least, this is not equal to one two ABC123, okay? So let's go and do that with self dot assert not equal. And then we can put this in any order we want. It's just checking that they're not equal. So ABC one, two, three, let's put it in single quotes, save that and we'll run it again. And of course now it fails and it's giving me the actual failure, like what, where it happened, what happened and what the assertion error is. That's great. So nat naturally, if I actually change these back to what they were originally, let's just do that in our env file and run this again, we will see everything's good, no issues. Okay, cool. But we have a problem. Let's turn this back into ABC123 and let's turn this into ABC1234. Shockingly different, but it passed the test. So it's not actually a good password still or good secret key either way, um, but it is still passing the test. So now I actually wanna show you one more thing that's worth knowing, which is handling exceptions, right? So to get to the point where we're gonna handle an exception, the sec uh, section being, of course, try, you know, do something and then accept, you know, handle this, right? So print, something. So we absolutely want to handle this exception. So if I actually just run it as is, yeah, it's handling it sort of. Um, now, of course, that's actually not valid even this, right? So what we'd want to do is accept exception as E. And then here, we'll just go ahead and say self dot fail. And we can put a string in here or just pass in E and then run it again. And now it's actually showing me another kind of way to fail a test. Okay, so this do something thing we actually want to do. We actually want to verify this. We want a real actual test instead of something that's not practical at all. So before I go into what the test will be, um, I wanna check this as a validation method, right? I wanna validate this as a good solid secret key. Now, Django has something built in that validates passwords. So if you think back to when we were doing authentication, we used this user creation form that of course is built into Django authentication forms. And going back a step on forms in general, we had this clean method here that we could actually verify or validate any given field. So Django has a built-in way to validate a password field much like in this user creation form. That's actually the method that we want to use in our tests. Now we could 
probably spent a lot of time arguing about how secure that method is, but Django core developing team uses it all the time. So I think it's safe to say that it's a valid method and a way that we can verify that this secret key is at least better than a really basic password. That's kind of the goal here. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and import from django.contrib.auth dot password underscore validation. We're going to go and import the validate password method. Feel free to Google this or feel free to Google Django, you know, password validation method, something along those lines to actually find the documentation about this and the import. And you could totally create your own validation method as well. Uh, but that's something that's a little bit outside of the context of what we're doing here. So now, instead of this assert not equal here, I'll go ahead and comment that one out. I'm gonna just go ahead and say is strong and pass the secret key into this validation right here. Okay, and so it's still that ABC1234, still not a strong password. Let's go ahead and run this again. I hit test and now I get this exception. So this is actually what I'm trying to handle. Now, if I just left it like this, this is not really that bad because it's showing me where the error is happening and it's showing me what's happening. But what I wanna do is be a little bit more explicit than that so I know what's going on here, like what is being validated, what is this password is too short thing. So to do this, we create our own exception method in here. So is strong now is of course gonna go in the try block. And if the exception is raised, then we will go ahead and give a new message. In this case, I'm gonna give the message MSG of a with a string substitution. We'll go ahead and say, uh, you know, bad secret key. And then we can also put in the exception mes message itself, which is just E dot messages, okay? And so this is the message that we wanted to fail with. That way we know exactly what's going on. Okay, so let's save our test case here and we'll run it again. And now it's giving me bad secret key and so on, right? So obviously I don't necessarily have to have all of these message in here. Um, I could just simply just say bad secret key um, or weak secret key is probably better than bad, right? Weak secret key. Okay. So now we have this test and it fails. So this is actually really good in terms of going into production. Now, when I run the test itself and I see that I have a weak secret key, you know, perhaps that's only locally and perhaps that's not that big of a deal. But the thing is you wanna get in good habits no matter where you are developing. So even locally, it's probably a good idea to have a strong secret key. And then when we go into production, it's probably a good idea to test even our production environment as well. And what Python manage.py test does is allow for that. So we can run this and now it's a stronger key because we went back to this one right here where Django actually generated this key itself. Again, as far as security is concerned, it's certainly possible that this is not the strongest it could be. Perhaps we can make it even stronger, but the thing is, we're not gonna spend all of the time trying to get there. That's a little bit more advanced than what we're trying to do here with Django. But this actually does give me a number of really good things that I can do. Just this alone is a good way to safeguard some of your code, which is why I'm doing it now. But it also gives you some of the foundation that we need to test other aspects of our code so we don't have major errors. And so thinking of testing different environments, we of course have our local environment that we're testing here, but using GitHub or many other tools, we can actually do the concept of CI CD, and that is CI CD, continuous integration and continuous deployment. We can actually push this code into a production-like environment, run all the tests, and if they succeed, then actually push it into production. If they fail, then you know alert the development team to solve that problem. Um, so that's pretty cool. We now have a lot of that foundation. And I would encourage you to test out writing tests yourself. 
Now, the key here is you can absolutely write too many tests, and you can also absolutely write too few. At this point, I have too few tests. What I'm not testing so far is maybe our form. We're not testing our models. We're not testing our views. And certainly those are things that you'll want to test as your project grows. In this series, I'm not going to actually test all of those things, but it is important to know that you're going to want to do this. Now, there is a philosophy called test-driven development, which is TDD, which basically says you should be doing this from the beginning. Now, I don't always buy into that philosophy because then you might be designing specifically to pass the tests instead of just designing an application and then solving problems as you go. Now, as you get better and better, at some point, you probably will be doing TDD because you know exactly what to look for. But as a beginner, I recommend that you just start trying to build things, make it actually work, even if it's janky, and then go back and start testing all of that stuff. So let me know if you have any questions on this. We will certainly do more tests going forward. But at this point, I would say pause for a minute, write some tests on your own, check out the different methods that you can use in here on the Python uh, code, the documentation. You can always look at all of the different ones and try it out. I think it's a good exercise. Let's go ahead and keep going.